Now, here are the match stats from this one, but you can't take too much for it because Cadiz took four points off Barca last season with an average of under 20% possession over the two games. And they've managed to take some points away from this one as well. As we welcome in Stevie Nicol, we also welcome in... Uh, here they are, all of them, Stevie Nicol, <laughs> uh, Jules Laurent and Ian Dark as well. And let's look back on everything we saw in this one. I will start with you, Ali. What was your main takeaway from it? Well, much like the highlights, the I'm just going to suggest that the first half, nonsense. Nothing. And I mean nothing from both of these teams, in particular Barcelona, because you expect them to be the team that actually carries the possession and creates the chances. But it looked like it was two mid-table teams just kind of struggling to get through a midweek game. Fractionally better at the start of the second half from Barcelona. We saw a lot better movement of the ball, a little quicker in the movement from the ball. But you just kind of see the lack of structural Barcelona when it's Luke de Jong crossing the ball to Memphis Depay. And that that becomes your best chance prior to the red card. It, it just tells you it, it's all out of sync in the attack for Barcelona. It should be Luke de Jong inside the 18-year box. It should be Memphis Depay providing the service or somebody else from a wider area. That's not quite happening for Barcelona. And yet, they had a chance to win this game. Carlos del Cerro Grande becomes a protagonist in the match because the referee gives a red card that I don't think should have been a red card. Two yellow cards are questionable at best in, in, in the decisions against Frankie de Jong. And from there, it was going to be difficult for Barcelona. But what I liked, actually, from Barcelona is the fact that a man down, they actually look potentially more dangerous. They got stretched. Yes, they were defending all over the place. The, Ter Stegen had to come up with saves. But then you all, all of a sudden saw runs coming out of the midfield, overlapping run combinations. Ricky Puch, Ricky Puch, Ricky Puch still part of this team. Ricky Puch makes an appearance and actually makes a difference in providing an outlet going forward and a little bit of different energy. So if you're Barcelona, you, you walk out of this disappointed because of, of the draw, because of the result, and because you need wins. But the, if you can take the last 20 minutes and then tell yourself, can we have that same dynamic movement in the attack when we have 11 players on the field, maybe there is something to build on here. Maybe. Ma well, yes, it's a big maybe. A <laughs> big maybe. Uh, Jules, in the pre-match press conference from your man, Ronald Koeman, we were told to lower our expectations. What did you make of this pre-match press conference from him, reading out that statement and then leaving? I just don't think... Any, any of it came as a surprise. I think it's exactly what we kind of expected from Barcelona because, as Ali just explained, there's no structure to their game. There's, there's not much into their game. Yeah, the, the last 15 minutes, because the game got wilder and because Cadiz eventually starting attacking, there was more space than for Barcelona to counter-attack, even with 10 men, and that's when they created the chances. But when they had the ball at 11 against 11, they could not create any, hardly anything. Because, and we repeat the same thing again, but because they're not building on anything with Ronald Koeman, there's nothing, there's no patterns of play, there's no movement, there's, there's not much in it. And I think it would be the same against Levante without Frankie de Jong now, who's going to be suspended, of course. So I think, again, we will see a very similar team and a very similar performance. It's a shame they could not get one of those chances in at the end, because I think a win, of course, would have been such a big breath of fresh air for them and, and the kind of boost that they need right now. But this is so disappointing again. It's, 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 it's another bad result. Uh, Stevie, you and Jules uh, were at loggerheads the other day over Ronald Koeman. What do you make of him after this performance? <sighs> Well, it's never good before a game when the, the manager is telling you not to expect too much. I mean, that is a slap in the face straight away. But the, but the, the, the problem is, is that he's being honest. Now, whether you like him being honest or not, he's actually telling the truth. I mean, Barcelona on the field right now are carrying too many passengers. You know, to Stegen, Frankie de Jong and Depay is what this team is. The rest are passengers. You know, Serginho Des, for example, Committed, yes. Gave everything, yes. But he's not comfortable going forward on that side. On the other side, you got two young guys, Minguez and Demir. Absolutely zero from them. So too many passengers. And and quite frankly, he's he's, he's right. Whether you like him to say it or not, Kuman is right. If you cannot beat two bang average teams in Granada and Cadiz back to back, then you're bang average yourself. So he's right, whether you like it or not. 
uh, Ian, Memphis Depay in the opening stages for Barcelona was looking electric. He came close today, but it's not quite happening for him, was it? No, his form's um, tailed off. There were two golden chances I think he would have gobbled up um, earlier on in the campaign. But, uh, yeah, you're right. It's not happening for him. And this is a results business. And Ronald Koeman, who does look like a dead man walking in the job now, it looks like a question of when, not if, he's going to go, because it does seem like a, a toxic relationship with the president. I mean, he needed the win there tonight, but it never rains. It always pours, doesn't it? If things are going wrong, they go completely wrong. They might have gone on to win that game, might have, if Frankie de Jong had stayed on the pitch. Frankly, that was one of the most ludicrous second yellows I've ever seen. An absolutely inept decision, that. Kuman himself gets a red card at the end of the game as well. So, Barcelona are creaking. I mean, it's... <laughs> PK said, didn't he, a few weeks ago, we're a little bit broken. I think they're a lot broken at the moment, but they do have Dembele to come back in. They have Anso Fati, who's nearly ready to come back. He might even come back at the weekend, and they've got Pedri to come back in. So Stevie's right. It, there aren't too many stars at the moment, but they've got a few who could come back and make a difference. I still think they've got enough players there to, to have a tilt and having a run at La Liga. But, you know, four points dropped. Uh, in two games against Granada and then uh, Cardiff. That's not clever. It was interesting looking at Ricky Pooja's reaction on the bench mm. when it looked as though Ronald Koeman was just overlooking him in the first half. So by the 32nd minute and Ronald Koeman is walking down the bench and Ricky Pooja is looking at him like, is, is he, is he going to put me in? Is he? Is he? Is he? No, 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 no. He tells Sergio Roberto, Sergio Roberto, the guy who has been criticized by the media in Barcelona, by the fans in Barcelona, you go warm up. You're the one who's going to go resolve the problems out there. Look, whether it's Ricky Puch, whether it's Sergio Roberto, whether it's Gabi, Demir, whoever you want to bring into this team, there's still flaws. And there's still, when we talk about cracks for Barcelona, it's not that they're just broken from what we see right now. They're broken in the foundation of the team. And so right now, there isn't an easy solution. And it's not a change of manager that is going to resolve this. There's a, a whole change that needs to happen in terms of player personnel. And of course, the manager. Because if indeed you're going to have a guy who's dead man walking, look, then start the project. Figure out what is it that you want out of the future of this club and then start the project and get it going. If Kuman is not your guy, then move on from Kuman. But certainly what the players do not need and what the club does not need is for a manager to come out in a press conference and say to the fans of this club, lower your expectations. It's not going to get any better anytime soon. Whether that's the truth or not, and I agree with Stevie, it may be the truth. And, and, and certainly from what we see in the evidence is the truth. But you don't come out and say that. You, you don't come out and admit to the world, you know what? We are terrible. Not the manager of a team. That's our job. See, the, us here on this side of the world will say that they're terrible. But the manager within the boundaries of that club, within the locker room, cannot say, look, we're not good enough. Because you still got to go and face the players. And those are the same players that you're asking to perform for you on the field. That's not the way to go if you're a manager. Uh, Ian, would a different manager make a difference with this Barcelona side? Or does it come down to the players that are available to them? Uh, I think it comes down to the players available. I don't think there's any magic wand. They are going through a difficult period. They're skin. They haven't got any money to go and buy the kind of players that usually would be attracted to Barcelona. Um, they might even find it difficult to find a new manager or one that they wanted. Of course, Xabi would be you know, a sentimental, romantic choice, but he has no experience of being a, a, you know, a top player. European club manager. You could say Pep Guardiola didn't either, but he'd managed the B team for a while and he had Lionel Messi and a few others around as well to, to help him get through the period. So I don't think that's the answer either. I'm not sh sure exactly how they can get out of it. I think they are just going to have to go through rough seas for a while and put up with it. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.